I am the author of what I believe is the only novel in the English language premised on bariatric surgery. Okay? And then I published this book in 1996. This is bariatric surgery is where you have your stomach stapled so that it is 5 or 10% of its original size in order to constrain your ability to gain weight. And uh, I published this book around 1996. And it was really a great sort of MacGuffin, as, as uh, Alfred Hitchcock would say, uh, for a novel, because it, it was unknown at the time. And so it was an opportunity to uh, write a kind of uh, allegory of self-transformation uh, about a character. And it was just a great premise, I thought, anyway. Um, and um, at that time, it was almost unknown. Nobody had this sort of thing done. It was quite dangerous. And there was really no agreement in the medical world as to what was the correct procedure to do. Uh, fast forward to today when you have something like 220,000 such procedures a year that are performed. And it's quite standardized. In fact, there's a whole industry that has sprung up around bariatric surgery. There are special hospitals. There are gurneys that hold people of 600, 800 pounds. There are machines that lift them up. And there are special long needles. And I won't uh, go any further than that. But um, it, it's a measure of the growth of a problem in society. And that is the problem of obesity. And so. Um, I, uh, Naomi had asked me to look at, uh, uh, at this for the book, and, and, and I looked at these, uh, the growth, the rise of these TV shows uh, on which you go on these shows and they help you lose weight. And you lose weight, one hopes you lose weight, very publicly. Uh, but you don't just lose weight. And the granddaddy of these shows, of course, is The Biggest Loser. Everybody's probably seen an episode or two of The Biggest Loser. If you haven't, I urge you to tune in or fire up the TiVo. It's very much a worthwhile experience. And, um, what was interesting to me about these shows was the extent to which they were highly ritualized. Uh, you didn't just go on them and sort of lose weight. It wasn't like going to a spa or something or just merely going on a diet. There had, they, they were penitential. And there was a whole process whereby one was purged of this sin, this very manifest sin that you were carrying around for all the world to see, the results of your overindulgence. Um, and you know, uh, I, when I um, wrote uh, that novel that I described to you about, uh, which was based on bariatric surgery, um, uh, it was uh, actually based on uh, The Pilgrim's Progress, which at one time was a, a great bestseller. You know, everybody read The Pilgrim's Progress. It's a little less popular now. But, um, and um, in The Pilgrim's Progress, you know, the character Christian has this great weight on his back, and he's looking for a place to put it down. And it seemed that these shows, to me, were really a modern version, a sort of reincarnation of this great best-selling book. Because you had people who uh, uh, had sort of sinned by social standards, by medical standards, and so on, and were looking for a place to put down, or a way to put down this great weight that they were uh, carrying around. And the shows, the, the, the biggest loser, anyway, I mean, shouldn't speak for the others, and there was a whole series of knockoffs. But uh, at least from what I saw, there was a process, you know? I mean, you had to, the person had to um, sort of testify about the, the terrible situation. You know, uh, no boyfriend or girlfriend, and um, terrible emotional problems, and can't fit through the turnstile, and chairs, and on and on. And, and then there was a process whereby the person undergoes a series of trials, not so different from the, the uh, the escapades, we can call them, that Christian has in the Pilgrim's Progress. And the trials usually involve you know, lifting tires and a great deal of sweating and panting on the, on the treadmill and so forth. Um, and because it, after all, is sort of cinematic, it's visual. You can't just have the person show up thin. Um, and at the end of which, if somehow the person can conquer all of this, um, this person is reborn, is resurrected, really. And that was the premise of my novel. that. Not only did the person get the bariatric surgery, but um, after the huge weight loss, no one could recognize this individual, you see. It was, it was a kind of disguise, but also a rebirth. And so he could re-inhabit the life that he'd been leading and, and figure it out. And in this case, the people hope that they can achieve the love and, and, and success that they've longed for and that somehow their, their weight has prevented them from achieving. So it was actually quite fascinating. I came to the conclusion, at first I saw these shows as incredibly exploitative and, and kind of hideous. But I, 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 after a while, I came to the conclusion that they were kind of useful 
And uh, what they were doing was bringing to bear uh, community standards. I mean, bringing to bear a kind of a norming. You know, we all rely on friends and others for this purpose. And in this case, the audience, in a way, implicit was, was the, the idea that you, you should, there are certain norms that are healthy and you probably should conform to them. And by committing to lose weight publicly, it was very difficult to fail. And so there was uh, a whole structure that these shows comprised which made it possible easier maybe to lose weight than it would be in your own, in your own living room. And so, uh, and so ultimately I kind of decided that, that these shows were not bad and in a way society had to fulfill a similar function and must fulfill for all of us, which is uh, the function of, of, of establishing and upholding norms and, and making it easier for us to live according to those norms. And unfortunately we have some uh, less than healthful norms right now, and um, uh, who knows, maybe these shows can be a beginning. <laughs>